Welcome to the Brick City Show. This is your boy, The Real Charlemagne. Got some fellas with me today. We're going to hang out for a little bit, talk about what we got going on in the world during this pandemic. Talk about our mental health during this pandemic. It's, it's been a struggle for a lot of people. So what we're going to do, we're going to unpack that whole situation. Brick City Show is about building a rich, intelligent community. We got intelligent people going to come to the show share their life experiences, share what they got going on in the world, and continue to, to grow with us as a community. Um, on the panel, we got Tony Craddock. He's from Raleigh, North Carolina. We got Andre James. He's out of Columbia, uh, Maryland. We got Brother Gene Allen. He's out of Charlotte. Also, we got Brother Tremaine Forbes, which he's here in Greenville, North Carolina. These brothers going to share a lot of knowledge with you, so hopefully... You could get, get some knowledge from them. First off, I want to introduce my brother, Tony Credit. Hey, Tony, what's going on, brother? Not too much. I'm glad to be a part of this program tonight. Um, just um, glad to be here and share my point of view and hopefully pour into some other brothers and uh, iron, iron choppers iron so we can uh, learn from each other. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yo, Andre, introduce yourself, brother. Hey, good. Good afternoon, and uh, my name is Andre James. Uh, thank you, Charlemagne, for inviting me to to your show. Um, I'm excited to talk about uh, mental health, especially for Black men. Um, I think uh, not only we can share some some knowledge, but also receive some knowledge too. So I'm excited to be here. Gene Allen, what's up, brother? What's going on, Charlotte? Yes, hi. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, Gene Allen out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlemagne, just thank you for bringing opportunity to, to people and always trying to get people together and all, especially the men, man. We really need this. We really need to be serious about changing our lives, changing our focus and growth. So thank you for the invite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. It's always a pleasure chopping it up with some fellas. You know, you know, I, I, I love our sisters. I love all people, you know, but, you know, they, they, send, they tend to take the spotlight occasionally. <laughs> Nothing against them. You know, I love I love my sisters dearly. But they, you know, they're playing a little bit better than that sometimes. So we we got to come here, unpack, and be transparent for a little while. Um, I, like I said, I just want to touch on the, the, the things we, we've been going through a pandemic. I don't want to mention the C word because it flags a lot of stuff, you know, now because that's a touchy subject for a lot of people, that C word. So we so when we address, please use the word pandemic. <laughs> so everyone will know what we're talking about. So during this pandemic, a lot of things that happened. We had death, we had, you know, issues, social issues, you know, we had police murders, we had so many things going on. How has it impacted each one of you and your family dynamics with this with this pandemic? Has it in, in, in any way hurt it or has it increased it you know with the with the with your connection to your family how you know tell me a little bit about your like your experiences and i'm gonna start with andre on this one how how does your life experience change with this pandemic oh great question so for me um it was it was an adjustment um i'm, I'm not gonna lie it's adjustment um, because there's a new new way of doing things. Um, uh, for one, it's work. Um, I work for the federal government, so um, we stopped, you know, commuting to work, you know, living at home. <clears throat> also, I have a 17-year-old. He's in high school, so he's at home. <laughs> and my wife, she's an educator, um, and she's at home. So uh, the first thing I did was let me strengthen this Wi-Fi network at the house <laughs> because <laughs> we all alone it. Um, so... Um, so to answer the question, I'm fortunate enough to spend time with family, um, to get to know family better, especially my son. I uh, spend more one-on-one more -on -one time with him. Um, so he's in the senior year, trying to play football. So just, have, just going outside, throwing the football with my son, to me, that was kind of like therapy. Um, we go to an open field, can't go nowhere, can't be around people. And, you know, just talk to him, you know, and just – Get to know him better. So to me, that was that was a blessing, um, cool. and also just checking in on family members, um, being close to my wife, 
Um, right. So it's, to me, it was, it was, it was more therapeutic. It was, um, it was a blessing. So I get a chance to just stop, you know, in the rat race, running and doing errands and get a chance to reconnect with the family. Gotcha. Uh, look, uh, pause, pause for a second. Uh, Brother Tremaine finally made it in. Brother Tremaine, um, introduce yourself real quick. Uh, you know, we already started the panel a little bit, but I want to go ahead. So, because when you start interjecting, I want people to know who you are. <laughs> but Tremaine, introduce yourself real quick for me. I'm Tremaine Forbes. I'm the senior pastor of Kingdom Heaven Ministries. I also work um, in substance abuse. I'm a substance abuse counselor. Um, all my life, well, most of my professional life, I've been a mental health, you know, worked in mental health, one form or the other. Sometimes it was DD, sometimes it was, well, let me excuse me, because I start rattling off developmental. Oh, yeah, acronyms. Uh, if you're going to use right. acronyms, now people wouldn't know, Mentally you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, mental health, now substance abuse. So now I have worked the full gamut of mental health, working with both children and adults. Um, okay. You know, I, so I do quite a, a couple of things. I'm an ECU graduate. I graduated um, from ECU with a degree in sociology, concentration, and marriage and family. Gotcha. And I'm glad to be here. Most Appreciate you, brother. Brother. Appreciate you, brother. So um, question, you know, uh, was discussing how has the uh, pandemic affected you and your life and just your family dynamics and just your day-to-day -day life? Um, i.e. work, family, just day-to-day -day living. How has it affected you? Um, I'm going to come back to you, Tremaine. I'm going to go to uh, Tony Tony, real quick and um, see, see, take his uh, stance on this. Well, actually, um, uh, just like everyone else, I think we had to embrace technology more. Uh, in my profession, human services, uh, we definitely had to make adjustments. We still had to serve families and, and meet the needs of our uh, consumers and whatnot. So we had to embrace uh, technology more in the workforce. Right. Um, as far as my personal life, uh, it just allowed me to, to be more appreciative of my family. Uh, right. You definitely uh, spend time, uh, it's just my wife and I, uh, we're empty nesters, but we definitely uh, uh, embraced the opportunity to uh, use technology and talk to our families uh, in, in different uh, locations. Uh, definitely stay in touch with our son in Atlanta and New Orleans. Uh, definitely uh, contact our families in Fayetteville. But it, it's uh, just allowed us to um, learn a new skill set when it comes to technology and then also to be appreciative of your family and to uh, become closer with them. So that, that's how it's affected me. And uh, of course, as, as a resilient people, uh, we, we've just learned to embrace what we have available. Uh, we, we can't necessarily uh, cry, uh, cry over what we don't have, but we can embrace mm -hmm. what we do have. So that's what we got. Uh, Focused on. Appreciate your transparency, brother. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Allen. Yes, sir. Um, you know, for me, it's been, I, I really realized, and I, you know, I realized one thing really important. When people talk about a midlife crisis, uh, I think we missed it. I know I missed it probably about 10 or 15 years ago. If the average mm -hmm. life expectancy, right, is 70, mm -hmm. so your midlife crisis should be at about 35. <laughs> Long story short, you know, I just started jumping in and doing everything I could do, man. At first, I was afraid to go out of the house. Then I started helping my neighbors out with stuff. And I said, you know what? We can't live in a shell. We got to, the, the world's going to keep moving. You look out the window, some people got to go. They have no choice. Right. Luckily, I was able to work at home. So while I'm at home, I've been, um, you know, I picked up video production. I picked up the radio production, uh, the radio show, just some things that you helped me get into. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I learned how to ride a motorcycle and I've, you know, PMP certification. I've just been trying to maximize anything I could do virtually or, you know, volunteer. Um, some people are afraid to go out. So I've been out volunteering with the school system. I'm right. working on a new program. Where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to program in the school system, things of that nature, man. I've just been jumping into anything possible that I could get into safely. Uh, as far as family wise, you know, we all have been kind of in our own silos. Everybody's been hiding out in their rooms, um, you know, just trying to get adjusted to everything. Right. I probably had 5,000 Zoom calls, which I appreciate people now. It seems like we're you know, more connected than ever now. Uh, a lot of people are that you wouldn't think about calling on talking to. Um, death and a lot of different uh, things have brought us together, man. But we just got to overcome the fear, and uh, we just got to keep living our lives. So with God's grace and, uh, you know, with, with God's ability, um, you know, I'm going to just keep on doing whatever I can do during this pandemic, man, and just stay safe and hope y'all do the same. 
Great, great, great. All right, Tremaine, last but not least on this, this particular question, hey, let, let it go, brother. I know you got a lot going on. Let's hear it. You, you know, during the pandemic, I'm going to tell you what's something funny. I, around about March, I got offered a job. At, well, no, in April. April. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the pandemic had pretty much started moving in March. Right. And then, so, I was kind of coy with the job, and then they Again, they offered it to me in May. And right. in my mind, I was like, man, I've been here two months. Mm-hmm. I'm going to spend my, I'm not going to get a, I'm not going to take this job off. <laughs> I'm about, because I, I do have a, 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 trying to say, I I have another little gig I do that, right, that right. really sustain me. Okay. So, man, I was like, man, I ain't going to take this thing. I'm going to go and I'm going to enjoy the whole summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, and I had a cruise planned and everything else, and the pandemic shut it down right in, you know, June, July. Right. And so what I ended up doing, I decided that I was going to rediscover North Carolina beaches, which right. I, I go to them a lot anyway. I started going to ones I never I never stayed at Emerald Isle, so I stayed at Emerald Isle two times. Me and my family did like maybe four-day stretches. Then we went to Wrightsville Beach, stayed on the beach, so you know that cost a little something. Right. And then we went to Wilmington. So we just started, and and and, and during that time, I, I was interviewed by a radio station in Canada, one of the biggest mm-hmm. Christian radios, let me add that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I got interviewed with them about some things I was doing with the church that was kind of innovative instead of um, our church completely, well, we did, we shut down, we went virtual. Gotcha. But to reconnect with each other, I started putting 10 by 10 tents and people yards, and so I start having services in folk yard. Okay. And I said, we'll just go to so-and-so house. If you don't live there, we don't want to see you. We just, we're going to go outside, and we're going to broadcast from yard to yard. Right. And uh, it went it went well. Um, we ended up buying some property. Okay. Um, the church did. We did a whole lot of things, man, and the um, just picking up traction with different radio shows and then different radio stations. Um, I don't I haven't really advertised for them well because someone was so unexpected and I to do so mm-hmm. much with my new job that I just don't, you know, I'm, I'm like, man, I'm kind of ready. I got to put, pay some things together. But a lot of things have picked up. Um, I pray that everything went well, is going well um, in some other circles, but my family, I, I really enjoyed them during the pandemic. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I feel like uh, it was for me because you know, as you guys know, you know, um, I'm a hand, I'm hands on with my family. I'm very hands on. You know, I'm I'm at games, I'm at events, I'm at everything possible. <laughs> if I if if I could physically get there, I'm dead. Um, <clears throat> so that that put a damper on me a little bit, you know. My grand, I had a grandchild being born during the pandemic. We wasn't allowed to go to the hospitals, things like that, you know, just having to come back and, you know, just be like, wait a couple of days, you know, wait weeks until they're more mature before you can actually hold them and, you know, and, uh, you know, just things of that nature. So that put that put that weighed a little bit heavy on me because I'm such a hands on person when it comes to my family. Um, the flip side of that is slow us, all of us down as a family, that we communicated more, you know, via Zoom. We we got a family chat now that we use. Um, things of that nature. So in essence, I think it, it drew us a little bit closer communication-wise because everybody's not in the rat race. You know, everybody's not running and everybody's not doing a bunch of things. You know, and um, I think for me, it it, it drew us closer. And uh, we actually communicate a whole lot more because it's not a day goes by that we don't, you know, we got <laughs> we got TikTok videos, we joking on each other. We're doing something to engage as a family. You know, even we though we don't see have- that no, on Brick City? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, you know, on champ. Yeah, look, we're doing TikTok. <laughs> Oh look, we can't share. We can't share, but it, it's family stuff, man. But um, but yeah. So that that's just my dollar. Look, <laughs> you said what? I give you a dollar. 
<laughs> no, no, no. I can't do it, man. I can't do it. But yeah, so uh, so just move, push it forward, man. You know, um, socially, and, and, um, you know, we we talked about dynamics. Um, mentally, how did you cope mentally with the, you know, as, as Tony said, the new norm? How did how did you adjust mentally? You know, because quiet is kept. You you with, like you said, we with our families more. We're not going into the office. You 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 learn things about your spouse or your 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 partner that you probably didn't know because you're spending more time with them. You know, they're not going to the eight to five. You're not going to the eight to five. So the eight to five, you guys are together. And so mentally, how did you adjust? To the to the new norm of being at home, and I, I'm gonna start with uh, Gene on this one. How did you adjust with you and your family? You know, in your face, twenty four seven. Got to unmute, man. I think he's still muted. What is he there? Maybe Gene. Oh, wait, no, Gene. Gene. Can I throw my hat in the ring? Look, yeah, yeah. Look, no, yeah. hold on. Let me let me get let me get get Tony start this one off. Then go ahead, Tony. Look, Gene must be out and about. <laughs> All right, I'm, uh, I'm here. Okay, here. Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. Not- I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I was I moved away, but but yeah, it's been it's been kind of interesting. First, my kids were at home. Uh, my daughter, her band competition was canceled, and you know, um, the parade was canceled for my son. And it was actually his graduation year, so it was really kind of sad that they lost so so many uh, events and everything. So we just try to make things special for him and spend time with them and mm-hmm. do more family time. You know, games and. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure we have family dinners together, um, help my son get ready for college. So we've just been doing a whole lot of family things. Um, we've been forced to, and you know, the car rides together, exploring right. things, um, you know, going to the in-laws house and things of that nature. So we've just been spending a lot more time together, even though the kids are hiding in the room when I, we call them out, like we went and got a Christmas tree together the other night, <laughs> things that, you, you know, uh, yeah. Like the cranks, whatever that is, but those type of things, man. We've just been spending time making sure the kids been cooking. You know, they go out and get their own food and they cook meals, and some mm-hmm. nights we just take the night off. So it's just been really been a robust experience. Um, have kind of ha- having a hand in on them with these final years as they reach adulthood. You know, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's a blessing, man. It's been a blessing. Okay, that's what's up, man. Because uh, I know some people, you know, they they look at it as you know as a as draining sometimes because like you don't realize how much work plays in the part of your your social your social life you know you, you go to work but it's still you know you got that ride to kind of clear your mind and you know you on the you on the, the, the metro or something you you're there but you kind of not there but now you don't have that outlet so I was you know so I was just curious how you did how, how people was dealing with that but um you go ahead Tremaine let me see what you got to say about this okay now nah, man I, I'm gonna tell you the truth um, the pastor side been stressed out. Gotcha. I, I, I'm going to say this, because I, I don't know how many of y'all are e- introvert and extrovert. I'm an extrovert, so then I get life by being around people. Gotcha. Being, being loud, being ignorant, you know, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, spreading knowledge. All I'm, I'm having fun with that. But, you know, I, I get a lot of life from that. And so, for me, um, especially that most of the people, everybody in, in my house are introverts. Gotcha. Yeah, so you know, I I don't know how more aggravating I have been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I, you know I'm running out, pump up the jam, just going wild. Right, right. But right. I, one thing I did do during this um uh, pandemic, mm-hmm. um especially during the summer of 2020, I just walked around. I would see neighbors outside. I didn't come in the yard, but I just start talking to them. Gotcha. You know, I mean, I just talked to everybody I saw. Got mm-hmm. I met a whole lot of neighbors. Learned a lot of the neighborhood history right because i you know people that have been here longer than i have and i've been there 20 years oh wow and some people that have knew some things so i just been walking around just getting to know no folk that i never even cared to know mm. but i had to i had to talk to somebody dog i know that's you right know, so I, I know that's right so, yeah, so you... i wouldn't be like uh what's your boy named tom hanks with will they <laughs> <laughs> got a basketball drew a face on it <laughs> yeah i mean because like i said man you i, I mean i've been knowing you pretty much all my life and um, you you always been that that outgoing person, man. And um, you know it, it's good that you was transparent with that because a lot of people, you know, we try to shy away and say, "Man, I'm good, I'm good." But you just said you wasn't good. 
you know, and um, you know, that's that's transparency, and I think we need more of that being, you know, black males in our community. Transparency say we're not okay all the time, you know what right. I'm saying? And it, it, it put a damper on you, but you found things and ways to adjust. You didn't let it right. keep you where you were, and um, that, and, that's a testament to you, man. And I'm and, proud and, of and, you, man. Look, because we we I think we talk more. We actually yeah, we talked have. more in the last year. <laughs> You know, since yeah, you high school, you know, we, we was, yeah. you know, we was high school, we lived out of the street, we talked a lot then. But I think within yeah. the last year, I think all of us have stayed in communication with us, yeah. with each other more since this pandemic going on. You know, if right. it's just, hey, how you doing? You know, what, what's going on? You know, we got a group text, we text each other and say, man, what's good? You know, what's going on? Y'all so, start, look, y'all start texting too much. I just hit the phone. You hit the phone. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, everybody. Hey, up, you, yo? hey, you be careful to catch, catching us in. We be getting out of shower. Tremaine be ready, yeah. ready to start chatting. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, yeah, man? All right, Tony, Tony, what you got, man? How's, how's your mental health right now with this? You know what? And, and I just want to uh, piggyback off of what you said and what uh, Andre said earlier as far as um, – it's, uh, as black men, we have to affirm that it's okay not to be okay. Right. And, you know, that's one thing that we have to come to grips with that, you know, uh, it's okay for us to have some concerns and whatnot as, as long as we address those concerns in a, a positive manner and in, in, in an appropriate manner. As far as um, my mental health, uh, just like you said, you know, uh, missing that drive to work. Uh, what I do now, that I've modified my schedule. I get up at 6.30. I, I go for a two hour walk. I go, I walk between five and six miles every morning. Wow. That's my way of resetting, refreshing, replenishing, rejuvenating and get myself ready for the day. Gotcha. Um, and then as far as um, just being in the house every day with the spouse and everything, you know, you still have to uh, set up your uh, workspace. You know, I, I actually went, actually I was fortunate enough, um, had a family, fr- a family, re- well, I had a family member that uh, purchased a home and they were, um, the previous owners left a executive desk that the, right. they didn't want. Okay. So I, I just happened to come across a desk. I created my own workspace at home that I appreciate more than my actual office space. You know, <laughs> I've been to the office a few times this year, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm more productive at home in my home office space than I am in my workspace wow. at my um my, my work work, you know, uh, okay. the social media is, is, a, is a something I find therapeutic as well. I mean, I know for those that are friends with me on social media, I mean, I post pictures every day of me walking, right. uh, just like to, to Jermaine's point, you know, I'm, I'm a social butterfly myself, but, um, you know, I, I try to be engage people via uh, technology. Okay. Uh, I do walk through the neighborhood and everything like that. But, um, as far as just being in the house with your spouse all day, you just have to, uh, create your own personal space and then right. have your, have your time and things like that you know she has uh, we live in a two-story home i have the upstairs she has the downstairs i'm in my office locked in making things happen for family families in, in the community right and she's doing what she likes to do is our arts and crafts downstairs so we we have our me time and we have our you know time that we um come together as well but we also have our, our time individual time to reset and get things accomplished and have a productive day and then come together and share a day share our, our experiences with each other. Right, right, right. Andre, mm-hmm. let's roll. What you got? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, just like um, Tremaine said about introvert, extrovert, I'm more of a natural introvert. Okay. Um, but I learned sometime um, in the beginning, you know, you don't, you need a space. I need a space for the family. So I'm going to be honest and say, the transition was tough, gotcha. you know, the transition was tough um, because as, as the, the father of the man in the house, I had to make sure everybody's good. Right. You know, that's what we did. We made sure everybody's good. Uh, like I said, the Wi-Fi, that got to be good. Uh, finances, got to be good food. <laughs> and mm-hmm. everybody remembers it's hard to get food and, and, and toiletries and stuff. But, you know, as men in the house, we had to make sure everybody was good. So it's like, yeah, that first three or four months, I make sure everybody else is good. And then they're like, huh. And I'm good, <laughs> you know, how to ask right, questions. Right, 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 right. And I like how Tony says sometimes, you know, it got to be okay to be like, yo, I'm having a bad, you know, I'm going through something right now. I may not even understand what I'm going through, you know, or like, um, it's tough right now. I may, have, I may have a couple of days. And just to be honest, that's one thing I wrote in my notes that I learned is I have to be honest with myself. 
Right. You know, I'm not Superman. You know, <laughs> um, I got to be honest. And as men, we don't like to share uh, we got weakness here and there. You know, we need help. Right. right and you right. know, me and you, me and Charlotte, man, we talk so much during the pandemic, and our relationship, you know, really just right. helped me. And you know, and our conversations. So, um, but how to how to get through it? It's kind of same thing that Tony did. Said, you know, I got my little workstation. You know, I got my my office together. Have a routine in the morning. Uh, I do a lot of reading and meditating. Um, you know, and that just really has helped me to um, disconnect sometimes. And sometimes you need to disconnect right. and you know recharge. Gotcha. So, gotcha. I appreciate the transparency. <laughs> Like, you know, like you said, it's it's okay to it's okay to need help. It's okay to want somebody to talk to, or need somebody to talk to because we we all need an outlet. Um, you know, and you know, uh, a lot of people have turned, you know, as Jermaine, you know, he's substance abuse. A lot of people have turned to drugs and alcohol during this time, unlike no time before. You know, and um, you know, it, it's it's a it's because, you know, they ain't have anyone to turn to or they just let the day-to-day life just consume them. Um, with that being said, you know, uh, I know you guys, sports fans and things of that nature, how did that, when they, when they, when they shut down sports, how did that affect, not you per se, but, you know, a lot of people in your circle you know, anybody could just jump in on this one. Like when I, when the sports shut down, ACC shut down 2020, I was like, this thing is for real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, I, I uh, look, a lot of people look at my statue and automatically, oh, he must like football. I like football, but basketball is my sport. You know what I'm saying? Basketball is my thing. So, um, you know, how do you guys mentally, like there was a lot of our, like, evening that's that's a lot of our talk you know long time we all we talk about sports 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 how did you recondition yourself to 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 get away from sports and just hey we what we what we got to talk about now (laughs) how did you adjust from that anybody just jump in on that one i i I like to go ahead on that one i i think you know that that's that's where the support of your uh uh your 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 fellow brothers come into play because i know uh, being a member of the fraternity and being, you know, a local member of my alumni association with my university, we came together, you, you do wellness checks, you know, I mean, of course you do them throughout the day, but then, you know, you, you got that, you know, that, that one brother that is a diehard football fan, you know, right. you know, let, let, what, what can we talk about? Let, let, let's talk about how, how are we making it through the day? Yeah. I, I know football isn't here, but what, what can we do to substitute that? I know you got you know, your picks or whatever you're looking at, you know, I know the season isn't, isn't taking place this, this year. So what exactly can we do to alleviate that, that stress of you not having that, that, that football season? So, right. so let, let, let's change that up. Let's, let, let's actually get, in, get, uh, get active, get, get engaged. So let's, let's talk about maybe uh, exercise routine or just talk about, you know, some other activity, meditation. Let, let, let's, let's talk about um, joy, having a book club, you know, what, what, okay. what's everybody doing? You know, yeah. let's, let's uh, get that 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 weekly Zoom call. Um, just 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 keep everybody engaged. You know, for wellness purposes and just for uh, everyone's well being. What what are we doing? What what are we doing together? What what are we doing to keep our stress levels down? You know, what, what's the recipe that we're working on? I know everybody's trying to keep it together. You know, nobody's trying to gain any extra weight. What's hey, that smoothie good recipe that, look, looking good, like? Good luck with that one, man. <laughs> what's, what's that smoothie recipe looking like? You know, yeah, look, yeah, look, yeah. Look, let's, let's talk about life. You know, I, I yeah. know everybody got some situations going on, and just like you said, you know, let, let, it's it's okay not to be okay, exactly. and as long as we can talk about that, as long as we can see see it through with each other, then you know we we, we can we can accomplish anything. So gotcha. that, that's that's what I've uh, looked at, and that's what I've uh, done, and I know. Uh, Andre and I, uh, you know, exchanged a few conversations, you know, and, and we have to affirm each other, you know, just, right. just don't, um, uh, uh, you know, just because, you know, you know, I'm proud of you, brother. I love you, brother. You know, yeah. you're making some things happen, you know, right, right. Just, right. just some positive affirmation for one another. You know, okay. we don't do enough of that. No, so that, no. that's some things that, we, that, 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 that are uh, pouring into each other, pour that positivity into each other because we need to replenish and rejuvenate because we can't pour from an empty cup. So right. we have to recharge and we have to pour into each other. Right. So right. that's, that's some of the things that I, that I look forward to. And that 
I uh, continue to do in, in light of the pandemic. Right. Hey, you know something else, man? When you think about it, not only did we not have sports, and we had a very horrible political season at the time. Yeah. So, you know, so we here, here we were. We had um, just one of the most horrible, uh, in my opinion, just a horrible political season. And I got to a place where I got had got so consumed with the news. By the time June, July got here, I made a, a of 2020, I made a, a decision. I'm not watching the news like that anymore. I'm just taking all the way, I took all the way off to October before I start doing my political bashing and going in. As I'm just take a break, I'm going to enjoy this summer. And, um, you know, and I checked on my guys more. You know, sometimes you, you know, we, we get so caught up in our own lives. Like you said, Tony, we, we forget about the, the man next to us. And, um, you know, I, I, something, one thing that I've learned about even when you live in housing communities, each nice house or each family unit that they have, it creates a sense of wealth. So the vi whole community value goes up. They, they just recently built some houses. Now, quite naturally, the price of lumber and everything else went up. But they built some houses right next to where I live. And it and I already live near nice houses in this area. Keith sent us a um a a, a thing, or uh, excuse me, the real Charlemagne sent us a thing <laughs> <laughs> that said where was the ten richest places in Pitt County. And I lay I actually live on that other end, mm -hmm. but I you know and so I mean not on the end that you know I'm the top two, and so my house went up value went dr up dramatically. My point is this, but we have to check up on our brothers because if your value goes down, if Tony value goes down, if Andre value go down, Gene value goes down, Charlemagne's value go down, then quite naturally my value goes down. Right. And we have to we have to make sure that we're there for each other. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so we we um uh in our circle um between Charlemagne and and, and Gene and you know quite naturally Gary too. Um, and that's a little circle we have differently. We have an information, I man. we're talking about business all the time. We're texting about business all the time. I think in the pandemic, most of the time we just text each other information all, but then the pandemic, I'm like, skip this. <laughs> we're going to call. <laughs> yeah, gonna that's talk. the extrovert in you. That's yeah, the extrovert in you. would call, he would video chat you in the middle of a funeral. Like, man, hey, what hey, was what's that? Up? <laughs> what that? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> hey, but I appreciate you, bro. You keep me on my toes, man. You got to be on your toes with, around Tremaine, man, because he he, hey, he going to hit you with that. Join join the video chat. I get a notification, man. I'll be like, hold on. Here you go. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. But that's a good thing. But like you said, we got to cons consistently keep the value up of us and, and our mental health. Um, you know, we we... We, we got so much devaluement just by society. So we definitely have to reach out to each other in our circles and just say, hey, bro, you good? You all right? And, uh, and if you're not all right, let's talk it out. Let's figure out how we could get you some help or how to get you better, you know, you and your family. Um, anything you want to say, Dre? Anything you want to tap on about this? Um. Now, I just wanted to just uh, agree with, you know, with Tony and Tremaine and just two things that, you know, it's cool for both of them. Like uh, was Tony was talking about um, that we need to encourage each other, iron sharp and iron, um, um, telling, telling brothers, yeah, you know, I care about you. You know, I respect you. Or I appreciate you. I think that's, I think that's, um, I think we need to do that more as, as brothers. Um, <clears throat> and also what Tremaine was talking about before is like sharing information. Um you know, we have our little circle of friends or, but just sharing that information, you know, just, it's just critical. Cause I learned something already, <laughs> um, you know, um, today from you, from, from you brothers, I, di I didn't even know. Um, so um, I just think that's key, sharing information um, and just, you know, you tell them brother, you know, hey, I see you, you're doing your thing, man. You need something, just let me know. I mean, that goes a long way with some brothers. <laughs> and, and you know, man, you know, <laughs> 
I think, man, I think, you know, as our masculine side, it's, it's hard to tell your brother I love you. You know what I'm saying? Another man, hey, I love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of times we we get so caught up in our manhood, we can't tell our brother, yo, I love you, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and not looking at a feminine way or a, you know, the, the other way, you know, that people be taking it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, but it, it's, it's okay to say I love you. You know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of times in our community, we don't say that, you know, and, and you know, your spouse and your kids. And I think I said I love you more to my kids now than I ever have. Because it's like, it, 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 honestly, just being transparent is the fear factor. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. You know, it, and it, it's more prominent now than it was yesteryear because, you know, we felt like we was vulnerable. We just running the streets wide open. But now we have, you know, we're in this pandemic. There's people that we just talked to, you know, yesterday, people we went to school with, they're gone. So the appreciation of telling someone you love them as well as acting within that love, I think we, we got to do a better job as well. It's better, you know, with our brothers, especially, you know, saying I love you, man, because like I said, we don't get it a whole lot. We don't get it. You, we don't get it. We, we the last ones to tell, we the last ones to get eat. Sometimes we the last ones to get, on, get everything because we always in first place, we always making sure everybody else is good. Right. And, and, you know, that's what real look. men do. You know, look, that's evident in Father's Day, Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's Day, they get diamonds, <laughs> they get they getting spas and everything. Father's Day, you getting a bow tie, a tie, or some socks. <laughs> look, don't forget, look, we look, we get them. Don't forget them drops. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, underwear for the people that don't know what the draw is. We, yeah. Look, we from the south. We from the south. Draws. Right. Yeah. 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 Also, <laughs> you also have, have, have to uh, take into account that you on Mother's Day. You know, you take your mom out for dinner. For Father's Day, they want you on the grill cooking your own dinner. Cook your own dinner. <laughs> you know, you know, like one time food, but we ready. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you, we we gotta we gotta normalize loving each other. You know, and, and loving exactly. your brother. You know, uh, I think we we have a hard time with that because, you know, you tell somebody, "Oh, you gay, you gay," or you you know you this and that, and I'm like, "Nah, b, it ain't it ain't about that." You know, you got you gotta love your brother. You know, you gotta love like love our neighbor. You know, what I'm Look, saying? when I when I first became a Christian, i was going around telling everybody I love them, especially yeah. the brothers, and they'd be sitting there like, "What?" <laughs> 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 man. I love you, and hey, uh, hey, did they show back like, up to church next week? They were like, same, they were like, same, or mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> all right, that's yeah. enough of that. And, and, and just like you said, I think it's a, uh, it's, it's all a systemic change, a shift that we need to reteach and recondition ourselves. Right. That you know, telling each other that we love each other is not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of uh, any other. Uh, anything other than, you know, just showing you, you uh, uplifting each other. So, you know, and we just have to change that, 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 that uh, connotation of telling another man that you love him, you know, because, right. you know, as brothers, we should be able to do that and, and, mm -hmm. and come from a, a good place in our, in our heart that, you know, we're here to pour into one another. Exactly. And, and we don't often see that because we didn't see that growing up. But when mm -hmm. you know, when you learn better, you know better, you do better. So I, I, I figured <laughs> that we, we're, um, we just had to change our mindset and just, you know, come together as brothers and, and they uplift each other. And we, we don't see enough of that. And right. so that's, that's, that's one thing that, um, that I, I try to uh, pour into other brothers and, and brothers have poured into me. So that, that's a, if nothing else we can share with our, 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 our sons and our families as a whole is that, you know, that we, can, we can show them and tell them that we love them and let them know that that comes from a good place that, because there's, no, there's no harm in telling each other that we love each other right. and showing each other that we love each other as Charlemagne has, has, uh, has exactly. already uh, reiterated. Yeah, man. Well, man, like we, um, we're coming up on a little bit about 45 minutes. You know, I know, look, I know we, this is during the week and you guys got it, got jobs to do tomorrow serving the people. Hey, I want, I want, you know, you know me, I like, I like nuggets. I like, I like, 
get information for people, man. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with Gene. You know, in no time limit, drop drop a nugget, you know, and let and let us know what you're working on, what you what you doing to better yourself and better community, because you never know who you're gonna help. So um start with Gene. Andre, jump behind him. Tremaine, and Tony, I'm gonna let you let you close. I'm gonna let you drop the mic on us because I know you're gonna drop something for us. <laughs> hey, okay, yeah, man. Um, first thing I'll say with the love thing, you know, I got a cousin. You guys probably know he's about 350, 450, and he told me he loved me on the phone one day, and I was like, Ugh, like it's an awkward moment, but it's just <laughs> like with a little baby, right? If a little yeah. baby want to play cops and robbers, you got to play with him if he put a gun up, right? But when he said, I love you, I said it back. I got to tell the big dude I love you. But it just started me thinking about how much we don't, um, you know, like sometimes if I do the wrong thing, you know, my brother should be my keeper. My brother should be able to come tell me, hey, man, you know, that wasn't the right thing or whatever, whatever. So we got to be, the, my nugget is take those opportunities. You know, sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it don't come off right. And sometimes you may even make someone upset or lose a friend. But my understanding of the Bible from the old, old my old mom, but she looked at it. You can't leave those uh, instances unsaid because right. like I said, you never know what tomorrow is going to bring or this or that. But also when you live your life a certain way, like, uh, like Tony was saying with a certain mindset, it generates a certain type of energy around you, be it, you know, spiritual energy, God, we are a, like in God's image. So we're not projecting enough of that image. And so when you go places and you talk to people, they see something in you. And I, there's a scripture that says, you know, you know, hide it in your heart. And I'm not going to mess on scripture with the pastor on the call. But, you know, <laughs> you, hide, you know, you hide Christ in your heart. And I never knew what that meant until I started meeting people. And they look at you and they see what can they uh, perceive from you? What can they ascertain? What kind of energy are you generating or whatever? And so once you let them know, sometimes you don't have to say anything about God. They'll start talking about God or they'll bring out something positive or something like that. So. I'm starting to learn the energy that you are projecting. Be be careful what you're projecting. Always keep it positive. You know, like hold the door open for people, do things like that. You know, I mean, you know, it sounds cliche, but everything you do, people are watching what you do. So even when you, they don't see you, you still got to learn how to do the right thing and keep things moving, man. And, and you'll see your life turn around. And, and like I said, the iron sharpens iron. If we keep on this focus, man, we can do nothing but build each other and build these communities right now. I'm working on a coach job with the uh, Olympic High School and with DCP team, a nonprofit organization I'm working with. And I'm also working on a mentorship program. So I'm looking for resources locally that can help get families the things that they need because a lot of the, the disconnection we're finding is the children are now running the home. And a lot of the principal told me when the parents come in, the parents don't say anything, the kids run, the, run this conversation and the kids are really aggressive toward the parents. So we have to take that back and, and make these opportunities to take that back, but also my program will focus on a program I did about 25 or 30 years ago, where we get the child and the parent sitting down together face to face, talking through the, the, through things, mm -hmm. learning how to communicate and, and practicing these skills. And the mm -hmm. principal wants to make it a mandatory course to avoid, uh, you know, so they can avoid suspension if they come through this mentoring program. So just do what you can in the community, man. People are looking for people to reach out and do some things right now. You'll see that sparkle in their eye. And that's, it's so amazing. People want to talk. They want to be loved. They want to be around good people. Even people with this caring thing and all this stuff like that, sometimes they check you and they make sure you're okay. You know, make sure you, is the black guy okay kind of thing. So, you know, just always be changed, advocate for change, man, and just use that God-given power that's within all of us. That's my nugget. That's what's up. I appreciate that. Hey, let, uh, let the listener know how they can reach you, man, real quick. Um, and your location, where, where are you at? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, you can reach me on Facebook. Uh, we got Olympic High School uh, Facebook page there. Um, and I'm on Instagram at cupradio704.com. Cool, cool, cool. Andre, let's go. What you got? Okay. Um, I'm just going to be honest. Um, those who listening to the show, if you don't know God, yes, you may want to find him quickly. <laughs> uh, this pandemic have it showed me that uh, where my source is, where my strength is, um, who leads me my light, and, and that's God. Um, <clears throat> another thing is, it's okay to adjust, shift, let's get a different mindset. Um, don't be scared to learn something new. Um, during this pandemic, I learned more about data and analytics. I took some classes about data analytics. Um, like the other brother, Gene, I took some 
um, classes on project management to just better myself. So mm -hmm. I know if I better myself, I can better my family, um, be a better example. So don't be afraid to learn something new. There's so many different free resources out here. It's crazy. That's one thing Charlotte made me and you free out. There's a lot of free information out here. <clears throat> you can, I can say you can get a degree, but you can get close to it <laughs> if yeah. you if you really really want to learn a new trade, a new skill set. You, you you can learn that. Um, and that's it. Um, what I'm working on, I'm working on writing a book um, to help um, young men to develop into manhood. So I'm working on that. Hopefully, the spring or the summer <laughs> I can get that out. And also, I'm still working on. Um, my uh, consulting business to assist um, small businesses on how to get federal um, contracts. Um, I'm here in the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia area. There's a lot of money, um, a lot of contracts, a lot of opportunities out here. Um, so my goal is to assist someone um, to navigate the system and hopefully get a, get a chance to win a contract. So that's it. Oh, uh, I could be reached, uh, I'm more active on IG is Dre Day 24. Just Dre Day 24. Got you. Uh LinkedIn, you on LinkedIn? Cool. Uh when you know, you guys send me all your LinkedIn and your uh contact information. So when I yeah. when I do the description, I can put everything in there as well. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot, Dre. Tremaine, what you got for us, brother? I'm gonna do my contacts up front. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook. Um and also you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. But if you really want to reach me, go for Facebook. Gotcha. Uh, and, and when you see my name is Tremaine Forbes. Tremaine Forbes. Um, one thing that I, I got going on, I'm trying to build a um, something that will, not only am I building a church, but I'm trying to make it available for the, company, the actual company I work for to be able to do substance abuse groups in it. Okay. So, so I'm trying to do that. Um, we trying to do. We've been trying to do things with our youth. Um, a lot of our stuff got delayed because of COVID. I'm very cautious. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm, I think we need to understand that there's a difference between precaution and just being fearful. Mm -hmm. And um, so or precautious. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I let uh, one of y'all figure that out <laughs> to that tonight. But uh, so I, I've been doing a lot. We actually took uh, about fifty kids from our church to the zoo. I mm -hmm. found out and adults and children. There was a lot of adults never been to the zoo. Mm -hmm. A lot of children never been. So then we took them to Ashborough Zoo. Okay. And um, it was fun for me to just watch through their eyes the enjoyment of learning and seeing. A lot mm -hmm. of times the kids, I, I minister to a lot of kids that culturally don't go do a lot of things. Right. So then and I've been, been doing this for the last 30 years. I mean, I've taken kids to the mountains. We've been to Jamaica with kids. I, you know, that, that, that right. I, kid, children ministry is mostly my thing. But we did that this summer. And um, we're going to try to take them to, I want to take them to at least two aquariums by next year. I was going to say before this year out, but that ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. By next year. And um, just expose them. Sometimes it's good to open their eyes out. We all know that in slavery, the average slave never left two miles from the house. Mm -hmm. Their whole life, right. from the, the day they were born, they never moved past two miles from where they were. And sometimes I think that has an effect on young black kids because <laughs> they don't see anything. So you tell them, come on, don't be in gangs, don't do this, don't do that. they never seen anything. My, I, I missed it. My desire was to take the kids to an HBCU so they can truly see. I asked some kids, I said, you ever seen Drumline the Teenagers? They never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And then I started giving elements. They didn't know what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I got to get these kids. I feel so bad because I missed out during the football season. Right. But I wanted to get them to, um, to be able to see Step Show, this, things that would kind of maybe catch their attention. And um, I tell you, it was something that was wonderful. Even though my children didn't go to, neither one of them went to AMT. Well, I got one that's still in high school. But that moment I took them out there and they start hearing all those black people yelling Aggie pride. I had one of my son, one of my sons is actually Caucasian. He turned around with me, he said, 
Mr. Trey, they, these guys are arrogant. I said, no, it ain't <laughs> arrogant. It's confidence. Right. And it's just a new sweat. But just to see a whole world where you see that people got a mindset to succeed that look just like them is very beautiful. And yeah. even though I didn't go to an HBC, right. I really want to provide that experience. Because I do, I, I've taken, even the kids I have now at my church, I've taken them to um, some things at ECU that they generally wouldn't see. Right. Okay. Dre okay. said, I get pride. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we got we got two HBCU alums on the call, man. And um, you know, just piggyback off what you said, Tremaine. You know, um, <clears throat> I had a conversation with some brothers here. Um, and you know, they was talking about their hood. And just in the city of Greenville, you wouldn't realize how many people haven't been out of their hood. And like you said, they they'll stay within that radius of their hood. And they don't even know what's on the other side of town. They don't know what the hospital's doing. They don't know what ECU's doing. They don't even know what the stadium looks like. And we, they live within a five-mile radius of the stadium. But they, they're they so consumed into their hood, they don't understand it's more to the world outside of your hood. And um, that, that's that's huge for you, brother. And um, I appreciate all you're doing for our communities and um, – you know, some of those trips, man, reach out to me. And Keith, I, can I, I tell you this? I'll do what I can. Keith, Keith, I took I took them about, maybe about 40 of them on a boat. Now, that sounded like it was expensive. It was on a ferry. I just, cool. <laughs> but I took, I took everybody. We drove down a little. That I was talking to my church one Sunday. Nobody ever. I was talking about boats. And you know when you're on a boat, and da 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 And nobody knew what I was talking about. So the next Sunday, I cut the sermon short. I said, everybody come with me. And we rode all the way down and got wow. on a ferry. And some of them were so scared to get out in their car. And then after a while, they got out in the car. They would like the Titanic, you know, hanging off the boat and different <laughs> things. It was it was just fun. Yeah. But then, um, you know, then I rented a boat. Um, oh, man, I, I, I can say this. This last year, I really have my little boat life stuff just been just right. to see what's on. If you ain't never been on the back end of the Tar River, on the back end of Pamela Cosa, and you see houses you ain't never ever seen on the inside of Greenwood. Mm -hmm. You see three story houses, some houses trimmed and go, and some houses got waterfalls behind their house. Wow. And I said, then I said, oh my God, look at all this money. And you can't <laughs> figure out, I, I can't, it took me a long time to figure out how to get to one of those neighborhoods. Right, right. But right. they hid me. Yeah. But yeah. there's things to see. Got you. All right, Tony, let's, let's drop the mic. Let's drop the mic, Tony. Okay, I like, I like to follow up on Tremaine and, and do uh, my um, contact information first. You can reach me on uh, Twitter or Instagram as the Coaching MHC. Uh, MHC standing for Mental Health Counselor. Um, I'm a certified family um, engagement specialist. I'm also a certified trauma center family coach. Um, I'm also a clinical mental health counselor associate. Um, and then also to, to Tremaine's point, uh, you, uh, you have an invitation to come to the oldest public HBCU in North Carolina, Phil State University, <laughs> uh, founded in 1867. So, I, you know, just let me know when you want to take the uh, young men down there or the group down there, and I'll connect you with um, the admissions uh, counselor or someone to give you a personal tour of the university. Um, to uh, leave, with, leave you with, uh, with a nugget, um, nothing beats a failure but a try. So, you know, but don't, don't be afraid, uh, as Outcast says, you know, get up, get out, and get something. You know, uh, increase your skill set. You know, let, let's let's learn a new trade. Let's, let's seize the opportunity to to better ourselves and our families. Yeah. Uh, so it's always good to uh, increase your skill set, um, and you know, there's always a, a, an opportunity to be seized. So let let's uh, do something positive, and 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 don't be afraid to be a mentor, or a tangible role model for a young person. Think about when you were coming up. If you didn't have that role model that that you sought. Be that role model for someone that's behind you right now. So let's always be be cognizant and, and be mindful of giving back to our uh, our new generations, and and just definitely um be a tangible role model and, and be a support for each other, because you know we all need support as well. You know, do those wellness checks on your brothers, do those wellness checks on your um on your family friends on your family. So you know don't don't, don't be afraid to uh to reach out and ask people are they okay. So nothing beats a failure but a try. 
and that that try starts with you. Got you. Man. Yeah. Great conversation, fellas. I really appreciate transparency. Um, that's that's huge, and that's what we need. You know, you guys are the start. You guys are the foundation. And this is actually the start of my new podcast. You know, so I brought you guys in. I just this this is the thing. You can't build a home without a foundation. You guys are my foundation. You guys are helping me build this foundation of what I'm building here at the Brick City Show. And um, I applaud you guys for being transparent. And look, you're definitely going to be on my special guest throughout this this journey, man. And um, anything comes up, definitely reach out to me because I'm always open to help any way I can. And you, you know that. Like, I think Tremaine, he had a function one year. He was at the park. I saw him at the grocery store. I just started snatching bread and juices and and stuff. And he was like, what you doing, man? I said, you say you having a cookout, right? I said, you can't have a cookout without this, this, that other. He was like, yeah, man, but what? what you? I was like, dude, just, just chill. I got you. And that's all we got to be. I got you, brother. You know what I'm saying? You know, and it's not, you know, I, <clears throat> I don't like to talk about that. I just want to use it as an example of I got you, brother. You know, so um, um, once again, a hey, applause. Thank you, guys. Um, I, I got a show coming up tonight. Nine, look, I'm a little bit late for it. But um, your Black News on Clubhouse. Hey, I'm, I'm a host up there as well. And um, y'all hashtag and what I'm going to do, I'm going to post y'all and hashtag Brick City Show. Start using that hashtag. Any information you want to share with me, start using the hashtag Brick City Show. And then that way I, I, I'll get the information every time you use the hashtag. And to the audience as well. The audience, you're going you're gonna to hear me on Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, and YouTube. You're going to see us on YouTube. These handsome fellas right here, these are my boys. Hey, hey, the boys stay, stay cleaned up for me. And um, enjoy, you know, enjoy life. You know, listen to these nuggets. And till next time, it's the real Charlemagne. I'm gonna be here weekly. Hey, you might get tired of me, but I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Peace.